Come on, you've been like us, romantic about Test match cricket. Let me come straight. Do you think Test cricket is in peril? I don't know. I think everyone's talking about Test cricket dying. Maybe we are preempting its death and trying to kill it before its time. I think Test cricket, when it comes to players, players value playing the five-day version a lot more than they do any other version. Is it true doubt. of the younger players coming in as well? Do you see the 20, 20 year olds feeling the same way? I think we've got to all change our attitudes. I think Test cricket to retain its, its premier position. I think there's got to be a few changes made, of course. I think uh, paying a match fee for playing a test match that is, you know, 10% more than uh, for a 2020 or a, or a, a one-day game or 50% more it doesn't cut it. I think test cricket should be given its premium position by, you know, paying a premium amount for players who play only test cricket sometimes. Um, I think uh, players must be made to understand that a good test player or a great test player will find it easier to adjust to the shorter formats of the game than the, than, than the other way around. Um, I think uh, uh, statistics and records should show uh, the greatness of players who have played the five-day game at the highest level. And I think when you have that prestige, uh, the rightful players given to Test cricket, of course, you'll have to fine-tune the way TV stations look at Test cricket, the way spectators look at Test cricket make test cricket more family oriented especially with the facilities and grounds um, have iconic test series in for every for every country so that you know it's like the ashes for for england and australia you know have have one for india pakistan and sri lanka where it it draws the crowd to the ground Those it's interesting the, you should say that uh, here at, at the brabant stadium which has uh, seen so many great test matches in the past and we're all delighted that test cricket uh, test cricket has returned here but, but I agree with what you say. I, I think sometimes you write orbits far, far too quickly. And I'd love someone to look back at the last 10 years and say how many great test matches have been played in the last 10. And I won't even be surprised if there's more great test matches in the last 10 years than say they've been in the 80s, for example. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I think, I think uh, you know, there were two Ashes series who, that were absolutely brilliant. Uh, India playing uh, you know, Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka was you know, a fantastic, fantastic experience for me. It's the second time we've beaten them. Um, and uh, we all find our ways for remembering. <laughs> uh, coming to India, you know, it's uh, you know, it, for, for Sri Lankans, we want to win um, against Australia, we want to beat India in India. Uh, those are the, the things we talk about as players, you know, and these opportunities don't come if you don't play test cricket. And if test cricket is going to be relegated as to the third format of the game behind 2020 and one day cricket, I think it's a very sad day for cricket. Do you see a situation, let me draw parallels from a couple of other industries, do you see T20 as being the fast food and Test Curry as being this chic, expensive, specialty restaurant that the classy people go to, but not many people go to? Or say being a top of the line Mercedes or BMW while the rest of the people are driving the small cars. Do you see that happening? Because if that happens, then the market will determine that you produce more fast food chains, they produce more of the smaller cars. I think Test Crickets are more like a... Uh uh, you know, like a food court in a, not not a food court, but rather a food mall where you have everything. You know, you have the low end and you have the high end. I think in a side, you will find the fast food players. You will find the you know the haute cuisine. You know, uh, uh, players who are the shining stars around them. You will find the guys who score runs quickly. Who you know who give the ball a a, a, a whack and you know that's the kind of responsibility players should put on themselves. Uh, when they go out to play test cricket because if the crowds are to come you know we, we have to accept the, the the fact that we play because we are watched we're entertainers we can call ourselves gladiators or any other thing but at the end of the day we entertain we like to play in front of a crowd to get the crowd we are, have to be responsible enough to play entertaining cricket and I think even with but the make... To some extent, come on, that's happening already. We're still we're scoring at 4 and over, which never happened in the history of the game. It is. And, and still, if people are saying test cricket's not interesting, then there might be something wrong somewhere else other than in the game itself. Um, and I think we might have to look outside the ground for that and, uh, and, and to encourage people to come. M maybe follow the Australian. We, you know, we always, it's something that I always sometimes think we talk too much of following the Australian way all the time. But I think uh, some of the things they, they do, they do right, especially not telecasting a cricket match to that particular city until you have an acceptable crowd at the ground. Uh, stop overkill of cricket on television. 
You know, you, you can't have 24-hour cricket channels and still expect people to come and watch it at the ground. That, that's, that's, that's a wonderful line from someone who makes his living from the money television rights comes in, speaking to someone <laughs> who, who makes his money from the money people watch on television. I know, but, no, but, but I think, you've got to I, I think there can be sometimes too much of a good yeah. thing. And I think we've got to watch out, watch out for that. And uh, uh, if countries are playing three test matches a year, I think that's a tragedy. I think play a bit more test cricket. a slightly stronger word, will you, than just tragedy. <laughs> to go there. Which leads me to one question I want to ask you. I wrote recently that I think in India, Gautam Gambhir will be the last player who will be assessed as a test match player. A lot of them will be looked at as, here's his one-day record, here's his T20 record, and here's his test match record. Do you wonder if someone like Tiran Samarvira, for example, from Sri Lanka, who's got an outstanding test record, would probably be among the last players who'd be assessed as a quality test match player in isolation almost? I think so. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think, I hope not, but, you know, it, it could happen. Uh, we have, you know, a couple of other guys, you know, Kaushal Silva on tour as a reserve wicketkeeper. He's a fantastic little batsman, you know, uh, not, your, not your typical attractive high scoring batsman, but, you know, a guy you just can't get out when he doesn't want to get out. We've got Tilna Kandambi on tour. Again, a great one-day player now, but also a guy who can adjust very well to the test scene. But if they are told not to value test cricket as highly as they should. I think they themselves might lose interest. But I think we are trying to create a culture in our dressing rooms, in our teams, in our first class structure where we value the longer version of the game a lot more than we do the shorter version. So once you've done your 30 hundreds and once you've done your what, 10,000 runs, I can tell you as someone who watches the game from the other side, that there is a, a career as a broadcaster waiting for you. I guess you've been told that before, so what's the big deal, right? What does that mean for the lawyer in you? Are you going to be rest, spend the rest of your life as a could have been lawyer? Probably. I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I don't, it's gone, isn't uh, it? I, I, I think you never know. You know, I might be desperate enough to go back. I might not find any work, and, and you, I might have to you, find a real job to. Do you see to Kumar Sanjay in the High Court in Colombo arguing <laughs> uh, a, a real estate, doing a real estate litigation? Uh, not really. I think that'll be quite a funny sight as well. But. Uh, I don't know. I think I'd like to spend a lot of time with my family once I finish. Um, and, you know, f the finish line's approaching fast. I'm 32 now, so I think four years to be realistic, four five to years. be greedy. Four is a lot uh, of years. But I think after that... Yeah, but greed is not in your hands, is it? I mean, if at the end of the fourth you're not scoring runs, then it's four. If you're still scoring runs, probably six. This is a subcontinent, you know, you never well, let know. Let me tell you what, <laughs> the final word. You know how the interviews always get the final word in? If you want to give up test cricket to be with your family, then you become a broadcaster, you'd probably travel much more. Yeah, I, I've, I've noticed that. So I think uh, yeah, I'd spend a lot of time with my family. And then um, I think, you know, I'll have to find a real job at the end of the day. Life goes on. Real life starts for me after, after I retire. But 36, if I'm lucky, 37. If I'm doing really well, then I think that's the time I should say thank you very much and move on. Keep speaking, keep scoring a lot of runs. And... Uh, Personally speaking, I'm waiting to share the commentary box with you. <laughs> Don't become too good, otherwise you might take my spot. <laughs> I think that there's no chance of that, Arshan. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.